Brian Hoops is with Midwest Market Solutions. He joins us right now. He's based in Springfield, Missouri. So let's go uh, see what's on Brian's mind here this morning. All right, Brian, thanks for joining us here today as we take a look at our grain trade and our livestock markets on the grain side here this morning. We started out by having USDA announce a couple overnight export sales of corn, uh, a pretty good batch, 146,000 tons, uh, went to unknown destinations, I believe, 115,000 tons went to Mexico, and the corn market promptly opened a little bit weaker. And then it tried to bounce a little bit after that, but it's just kind of been... Uh, barely staying afloat here today. Sounds like uh, very active harvest weather and I'm also picking up some rumors or some rumblings of uh, very active farmer sales out of the field this year. Yeah, we, we're going to have a very open week this week. A lot of sunshine, very dry conditions, and a producer is going to be going great guns this week trying to get as much harvesting done as possible. A lot of the yield reports we're getting from our clients is telling us uh, these n yields are coming in above their expectations. They really thought they wouldn't have this good of a crop, and so there's going to be a lot of overrun, and, and now the problem they're faced with is lack of storage space on their own facilities at home. They are going to have to go into commercial storage if they want to store that and these uh, commercial storage units have increased the price levels quite a bit for storing uh, crops we've heard uh, one client in central illinois talk about a jump of 25 cents for storage to the end of this year now it's 65 cents and they really are faced with either making a sale now when basis is kind of wide or paying that storage and uh, it's not uh, not a real difficult decision they're, they're making sales now uh, and taking the cash looking to reown it some point, but that is going to put some pressure against our futures and cash markets over the next several weeks. Brian, it hasn't been that long ago that we were talking about low river levels and uh, the fact that the barges couldn't load up as much uh, uh, of a load as they go down the river there, and that was increasing transportation costs. Has that rectified itself? It's changed a, a great deal. They, that transportation cost increase was reflected in the basis levels. Those really widened out. And uh, over the last couple of weeks, basis levels have started to come in as those transportation costs have uh, rectified itself and gotten a lot better. So that part of the basis has come down with the lot of cash that's starting to move. That's going to keep the basis levels pretty soft and fairly wide over the next several weeks as we go through harvest. Uh, are the large commodity funds still very short corn at this point? Well, they're still holding some short corn positions. In the fourth quarter, we've mentioned this before, in the third quarter of the year, they normally will try and and liquidate any long positions that they've built up in the second quarter. And so the July, uh, August, September is usually a down period in prices. But if we get into the fourth quarter, they're going to look to buy back into new positions. So we're seeing some buying interest and a lot of short covering, especially in the soybean market. But it's also spilling over into corn and into wheat, but on a very slow basis. All right. Uh, here we have soybeans on the board right now. We're showing November four and a half lower at 9.86 and a half per bushel in January, down four and a half at 9.97. All the deferreds are still over ten dollars, but weaker on the day. On the corn board, let's take a look at December corn. We're now three quarters lower at 3.49 and three quarters. Can't seem to go very far one direction or the other today. We've been on both sides of unchanged. March down a penny at 3.63 and a quarter. Wheat market in Chicago first. We have December now trading a half cent higher at 437. Here again, we've been on both sides of unchanged today. Kansas City, December, uh, that would now be trading at 433 and a half, and that's just one tick lower. We have March, May, and July all unchanged on the day. If we look at the Minneapolis spring wheat trade, we have December there, three and a quarter higher at 612 and three quarters. And if you look at the cotton market at the present time, we have December now quoted at 68.12 per pound. That would be up 59 points on the day. We'll be back talking more with Brian Hoops about what's going on in our livestock markets when we come back right after this. Come on back. Well, we talked earlier this morning about the rally in the Dow. We can uh, bring that up so everybody can see what's uh, going on there right now. 40 points higher on the Dow at 22,997 as it stands right now. We're talking with Brian Hoops of Midwest Market Solutions in Springfield, Missouri right now. Brian, that's just uh, up there hovering around that 23,000 mark here this morning. Uh, how important is it that A, the market trade above it, and if so, B, that it maintain above that on the close? 
Well, I think, you know, one thing we're going to see as this Dow continues to stay strong, we're hitting contract highs again this morning, it's going to keep some of the money from flowing into commodity investments. You know, a lot of times if we get a break this time of year, uh, a push lower into October, that will usher in some commodity fund buying as they allocate money from uh, the stock market over into grains or other speculative commodities. But we're probably not going to see that uh, effect this year with the new contract highs and staying at this high level in the, in the Dow. Okay, we had a bit of a turnaround in the livestock trade. Uh, earlier, when we started out the trading day here, we had everything higher. And let's take a look at the cattle market right now, see where the live cattle and feeders are. Now they're back up on the plus side, but boy, not by very much. The nearby October is up a little over half a dollar at 112.28. But if you look at December, we're only about three ticks higher at 116.90. We have February up a dime at 121.02. As I mentioned, we've been on both sides of unchanged here today. On the feeder cattle side, Right now, you have your November down 65, 153.90. Now make that 153.88. That would be down 67 cents on the day. Almost a dollar off our earlier high. January down 77 now at 151.78 per hundred weight. So the feeders, uh, what is weighing on the feeder cattle market here this morning, Brian? But yeah, we're getting quite a bit of hedge pressure coming into this uh, live and feeder cattle market. You know, we've had a lot of volatility the last several weeks. We're not seeing much in that uh, here recently. This uh, volatility has really come out of the cattle market as it's been two consecutive days of inside trading sessions, trading within the previous day's range. Um, that's a sign that the market's kind of consolidating, waiting for its next big move. We're seeing some light fund buying coming into the market, giving us a boost uh, in the live cattle and, and to an extent in the feed. But these feedlots are looking at big premiums out there in the feeder cattle market, in the live cattle deferred contracts, and saying that this is a, a good opportunity to lock in some big profits. Lean hog trade today. We'll take a look over there. Now, here again, this is a market that has been mixed today, and it still is. We have December down 18 now at 63.52, almost a dollar off our earlier high. February down 12 at 68.18. Uh, April, though, six higher at 72.08. This is a very indecisive market here today, Brian. Yeah, I think, you know, we pushed the new highs in that December contract, took out yesterday's highs after a huge rally uh, in the futures market. Traders wanted to bank some profits, and that was kind of the key price level to do it, is when we rally to new highs, run the stops above that, and now we've fallen back lower, nearly a dollar off those highs, like you mentioned. Okay, well, Brian, uh, thanks for uh, visiting with us today. I appreciate that. What's your website if somebody wants to check out your business there? Yeah, you can check us out online at MidwestMarketSolutions.com. Very good. Excellent. And uh, I understand, Christina, that Brian added a new location, hmm. too. So six states, I believe they have eight locations now. And the painting behind him, many people have inquired, bull and a bear, I understand. Is that That's, correct? That's uh, totally appropriate. Absolutely. Thank you so much, <laughs> Market Senator Marlon Bowling.